Welcome into the Film Guy Network. It's football season, which means I've got a film study for you. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome in to the Film Guy Network on a fabulous, I think today is Wednesday. Um, there is a tremendous football game coming up this weekend, a must win for both football teams between Al or, oh God, between Georgia and Tennessee in Athens. It's been a long week. Um, but we got a great film study coming up for you guys today in terms of a what to expect for this Tennessee football team. Normally, I bring you one side of the football. We focus tremendously on that side of the football, and then we send the other one somewhere else, prepare you for the other side of the football. Today, we're going to do half offense, half defense. Um, let's talk about it briefly from a 360-degree uh, viewpoint here, right? Offensively, Tennessee has really struggled to hit their deep shots even when Nico is healthy. So we'll look at that today. Trust me, it's not because they don't have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They've got guys running to clean grass every single Saturday. It's a matter of whether or not they're hitting those at this point. We'll also show you that run game. Tremendously impressed, guys, with the way that their tight ends block. It's very akin to what we were watching yesterday uh, with that Alabama offense as well. Their tight ends are used like modern-day fullbacks, and they do a tremendous job. Uh, defensively, I'm going to be honest, I went into that study really like concerned with what Georgia was going to do with that defensive line from Tennessee. Uh, knew that I was going to be impressed by the defensive line, and I left impressed by the defensive line. But what we're going to talk mostly about today when we go look at that Tennessee defense, and we're going to start with those guys, um, guys, they got playmakers that I, I didn't necessarily expect on the second and third levels of this defense, particularly these nickels, man. Christian Harrison and particularly Boo Carter are playing tremendous football and playmaking football. They're not just in good coverage. They're not just making tackles. They are impacting the ball. And that is one of the biggest and most, uh, you know, monumentous or uh, momentum swinging types of play styles when you're impacting the ball. Uh, super excited to do this with you today. If you are new to the channel and there is any moment in this video today where you're like, damn, I have learned something. That's what you're here to do. Okay. Hit the subscribe button the moment that happens. Cause I promise you, it will indeed happen. We got a saying around here. Let's shut up and let's grind the tape. <laughs> As some of you uh, might be hearing, your boy is struggling a little bit. Uh, hope, hopefully, uh, we clean some of that stuff up uh, as the day goes on and as the week goes on. First thing you're going to notice right off the bat is that the lights aren't turned on. Um, all right, first thing you're going to notice right off the bat, at least I did and Jonathan saw it as well, you're going to see a lot of disguised coverage. You're going to see a lot of team speed, and you're going to lot. You're going to see a lot of physicality in the open field. This is one of, in my opinion, the best and most physical tackling open field football teams in the country. They rally to the ball, and they do not miss open field tackles, particularly in their defensive backfield. Here's what I'm talking about with regards to the disguise coverage. They're going to open this snap with two safeties in the middle of the field. As the ball is snapped, you will see they will rotate and they will close the middle of the field it's also good to notice guys that they are staggered okay even though they're showing a two pictured look when I see safeties that are split in terms of their depth I know that there's a propensity for them to change the look post snap and that's exactly what happens guys down set hut they're going to roll the look okay so that's the first thing you're going to notice they're going to disguise coverage almost every single snap the other thing you're going to notice the team speed watch as this play develops watch these guys rally to the football run and physically meet the ball carrier all right that's boo carter number 23 you're going to see him pop up on this film study quite a bit quite a bit the team speed is palpable. You can feel it, okay? The physicality in open field, like I said, is very palpable. You can feel that as well. We're going to go to their first third and uh, long right here, all right? And you're going to see what they've got going on in terms of a picture. Again, disguising the coverage. It looks like the middle of the field is wide open right now. The ball is going to be snapped. I would imagine they're going to change that picture, okay? 
We're getting a little check with me, and that's exactly what happened. They they changed the picture. They rolled down this front side safety over here. They send the nickel. They rolled the other safety into the middle of the field, and now, again, they're disguising the coverage. The reason being, guys, they want to create some type of hesitation from the quarterback, okay? They know they've got a tremendous pass rush, right? They know they've got NFL caliber rushers. So if we can create any type of confusion, any type of second guessing from the quarterback, we will elongate the time that he is holding the football. Other thing you'll notice right now, first series of the game, no uh, James Pierce. They got Anthony Joseph out on the field, and he is a quality rusher as well from North Cobb High School here in the state of Georgia. But they will average, okay, they will average about 6'2 plus, 320 plus in here. They are big and physical on the interior and a lot better athletes than most big guys are in this conference. Everybody's got big dudes. They got big dudes that can move. You're also going to see some twists, some stunts, some games in the pass rush department, okay? They're going to circle their one-on-one -on -one that they want. Right here, it's number seven off the edge. They're trying to uh, get him sneaking past this right tackle in a speed rush, right? They are going to attack with Anthony Joseph this way, try to get him to draw the eyes of both of these guys, and hopefully we can get a free hitter up off the edge. But they will design their one-on-one -on -one for their guy that they want to win that particular snap and then the rest of the defensive line is there to create havoc. All right, this is the next possession, and you'll notice, look, their personnel changes, okay? Christian Harrison comes in at the nickel. The kid from Woodward High School, I think he's a redshirt sophomore, really like his tape. About six, one and a half, 200 pounds, big, athletic, physical. Plays it a little bit differently than Boo Carter. Boo Carter more of like a, a gnat, just a problem, just everywhere, really twitchy, really explosive. Harrison, they're much bigger, all right, football player at that position. On comes James Pierce as well, the first round projection as an edge rusher. Guys, one thing you need to notice, they wide nine these guys far more than any other SEC football team that I see. These guys are playing way, way out there, okay? They're getting speed rushes. They're going to get speed rushes. actually drop Pierce right here and rush from the field, right? They're going to drop James Pierce into the flat. They're going to plug the nickel. And, of course, he makes a play on the football. When these guys are around it, man, they, they impact it. It's not just they're there to make a tackle or they're there to make the play. They're, they're, they're going to make the biggest play available like this one right here. Christian Harrison does a great job on this blitz, slowing his rush down and getting his hands up and making an impact on the football. Another rep right here, Jonathan, of really, really good disguised coverage from Tennessee, okay? It looks like they're going to play a two-high look. They're going to roll down into cover three, okay? It looks like they're playing three over two over here with a middle-of-the-field safety. As the ball is snapped, this safety is going to bail, I believe, over here, and this safety is either going to roll down into the middle. They're going to change the look nonetheless. Change the look so much that I can't remember what they do. They roll this safety to the middle of the field, this safety down, and now they're playing cover three back behind it. And you can see, man, like this quarterback down set HUD, he thinks he might be getting a middle of field open look, might get, be getting some type of cover two, maybe some cover four. As the ball is snapped, watch him have a hesitation in his reads, right? He's clicking through his reads really, really quickly right now, not actually getting to the answer, which is this dig on the backside against cover three. This dig, as we're sending problems into this area, this should open up right about here as it does, okay? They twist the three tech in the defensive end right here. It's mod or common stuff, man. At this point, man, if you're if you're week twelve and we can't pick up, you know, end and, and defensive tackle stunts on third and eleven, man, we, we we don't deserve to win football games anyways, in my opinion. It's a common stunt. Good job by the center right here, keeping his eyes in that gap that he knows he's working to. Down set hut. Just wait for it. Wait for it to come. That guy's going to eventually show up in your gap. 
If one leaves, nine times out of ten, one's coming back. Let's go to play six. This is what I'm talking about with this wide nine, Bubba. That is a wide nine. He is out there. Okay, so you got to get to the spot. Do you know what I mean by that, Jonathan? We've got to get our two kick steps in really, really quickly. We've got to get back to that spot and be ready for him to approach us. All right, if we are one and a half, feeling like we're turning and running, he's already got the angle. He's not even running the hoop at this point, guys. He's running a straight line to the quarterback. So if we don't beat him to that spot, we're going to have real, real problems. So watch this right tackle for Mississippi State. He's going to kick out immediately and get way out there. Okay, way out there. It's a survivable rep. This is what it looks like. This is a survivable rep against James Pierce. Okay, we can live with this, but you can see how difficult it is, man. You got to get there and still feel like you got to be patient because he does have a pass rush bag, man. This isn't a guy that's just going to speed rush you for four quarters. He's got some hand fighting. He's got some bend. He's certainly got some twitch. Mm. As does 55. I know 55 doesn't get home here, but check me on the roster here, Jonathan. I would venture to say number 55 is at least 6'3. He's at least 312 pounds. Nah, that's 320. My man's a full 320. It's number 90 over here that might be a little bit lighter in the ass. Six three three fifteen. I say he's probably six three. He's probably three twenty. We're all right at this. We're all right at this. Um, twenty seven is a special athlete. This is what the note says. Now I don't know if they will be extended like this against you guys, but potentially. I mean, they they like to play with good numbers, right? If you've got three potential receivers over here. They want to play three potential uh, defensive players over you, right? If you have one over here, they want to play two over you. They want to have good numbers in terms of their pass protection skills and require those box players to hold up against the run like they do in this particular rep. But I want to show you this from James Pierce, man, because this is, uh, what is he, 6'5", he's 245. Um, this is a power forward playing football, guys. It's a really, really good athlete. Watch this play. Whoop. Jump back inside. Get that play. Whoop. I like seven as well. We're going to show you some plays from him uh, as the film study progresses. All right, this is right after a turnover. Tennessee's offense has fumbled the football. All right, I'm going to tell you what. I'm not going to say stay away from him yet because he's just a freshman. But as Boo Carter gets older and older and older and more savvy and more experienced, I'm just probably going to have to start staying away from him. And the problem is he plays the nickel. So he, he controls, right, a major portion of the field. Wherever he's at right here on this snap, he's over here. So we now have to kind of stay away from this portion of the field the better and better he gets. Oh, and then sometimes he's over here, and now we got to avoid this portion of the field the better and better he gets. It's just he's such a playmaker. It's not just that he's going to deny the ball. He's going to jump routes. He's going he's to turn you over. Knows what his concept is right here. He knows, okay, guy's trying to fight across my face. I'm going to drive on the route. Not only am I going to drive on the route, I'm going to drive on the route with my ball, with my eyes on the cue, right? Look at him. He's going to drive this route with the eyes on the ball and the eyes on the quarterback, and he's going to go intercept it. we got to push into him as a wide receiver. we, we got to get into him and then break it off. We can't be rounding this thing off floating to our depth right here, we're going to get undercut. I think their nickels are their best players outside of James Pierce. Okay, That's my opinion of these guys. Um, I'm going to tell you, if I were, you know, a lot of people comment, oh, Brooks, you should be a coach. You should be a coach. If I were a football coach, the number one day one install, we would install H-back insert. 
That's what we would do. We would install H-back insert. We would be a sniffer football team, just like they are right here. They're going to bring the tight end in motion. Okay? They're going to bring the tight end in motion as my pen dies. They're going to bring the tight end in motion. Okay? They're going to stop him right here, and then they're going to block out with everybody. Leave a big crease in the middle of the defense, and then they're going to insert the H-back, almost like lead back ISO back in the day. Right? You just put the fullback in I formation, and we'd run ISO, ISO, ISO. Um, this is a very similar play to that right there. Now, they're getting uh, a situation where they're backed up in their own end zone. They're doing check with me to make sure they get the look that they like. They get the look that they like, and then it's smack a ruse right down the midline. Now, here's why I would install it, particularly against this defense. Uh, when they get into pass rush situations, Jonathan, they get in wide threes. Okay, they get out here, they put their defensive tackles in three techs, meaning there is a massive void offensively right here, a natural bubble in the surface, if you will, right here as an offense. Okay. By the way, nobody running H-back insert better right now than Tennessee, a close second, probably Alabama. But Alabama doing it a little bit differently with super counter. Get through these checks. <laughs> it's also fortuitous right here for uh, Mississippi that Tennessee's caught in a run stunt. I think they're stunting here, stunting here, wrapping here, and we got this surface going offensively. Okay, so we got you licked. Mm. Day one install. Look how clean it opens up, man. Um, I love being wrong every once in a while, and I, I have no bones about telling you that I am wrong, okay? Um, I saw Jeremiah T. Lander. You know, for those of you who are new to this network, I'm the director of recruiting here as well for Sports Illustrated. So during the spring, I go out and see as many high school football players here in the state of Georgia and the surrounding states that I humanly possibly can. Jeremiah T. Lander graduated from Gainesville High School, formerly of North Hall. He's very, very close to this area where we're doing this film study. I've seen Jeremiah T. Lander. I've seen him play high school football. I thought there was no way in hell he would ever be able to turn and run with the number three receiver. Never in my life. Never in my life did I think that on an SEC field, Jeremiah T. Lander was going to be able to play Tampa 2, turn and run and cover the middle of the field. This was not on my bingo card when I evaluated this human being coming out of high school. Put us in two, Jonathan. Look at this son of a gun. Turn and run. Look at this. Now, when I see stuff like this, I, I, I admit that I was wrong, but also when I see stuff like this, I have to give credit where credit is due in terms of the development department. Something that this human being has been doing over the last couple of years, all right, has solidified some of these questions about his athletic profile that I had coming into college. Now, does he cover that perfectly? Does that look like Jihad Campbell from Alabama? No, no, but it gets the job done, all right? When coming out of high school, I thought you were a 485 runner, and right now it looks like you might be a 462, 468 runner. That right there is development. And guess what? It's only happened in about 24 months. Okay? Maybe not even that long. Maybe about 20 months for T Lander. Where are we at time wise? All right, we're good. Disguise plus pass rush equals chaos. Okay? What are they playing? We don't quite know. We think as we downset Hut, we think we might get in some type of cover one man. That's what it looked like to me, and that's what they're going to do their check with me's off of. Look at this, Jonathan. They're going to walk the safety down, bring the linebacker back in the box, okay? Got a lot of eyes over here. My pen keeps dying on me. Got a lot of eyes on over here. He's going to eventually put eyes on. Court, or safety's going to roll towards the middle of the field as the ball starts to snap. we got cover one, cover one indicators over here, linebackers in the box, okay? So they're going to call a check with me at the line of scrimmage is Mississippi State based off what they just got, okay? Now, <coughs> Tennessee is going to call an audible defensively and change what they're doing. Linebacker's going to bail right before the snap, and we thought we were getting one high man, right? That's what we thought we were getting. And now all of a sudden, they got a safety here, a safety here. We got underneath defenders. Uh-oh. And we might be playing some type of either cover two palms or cover four. They might be playing some cover four behind us. Nonetheless, the picture changed. We thought we were getting man. Then all of a sudden, we get some type of quarters. And guess what happens? The quarterback's now got indecisiveness at the top of his drop. And we got a first rounder speed rushing the piss out of our right tackle. Okay. 
Confusion plus pass rush equals chaos. At this point in the notes, you know what I got written down, Jonathan? You're either going to have to run the football, okay, or you're going to have to pass protect, okay? You're going to have to run the football to the point to where they can't do all this stuff that really impacts you in the passing game. You're running the football effectively moving the chains, or when you get into situations where you're going to have to throw the football, you're going to have to pass protect long enough to confirm coverage, right? You can't just, oh, down set hut work the quick game. Because what they showed pre-snap might change post-snap. That's a quick way to turn the football over. we got to be able to confirm coverage. So we got to have time to do so. Uh, by the way, end of this play, Boo Carter. End of this play, big play, big tackle, rally the ball, physical at the point. Okay? They will not miss open field tackles. I have not seen it this year, not consistently at least. And here's the thing, man, like I went into this film study really, really expecting to be just raving about the line of scrimmage play. The line of scrimmage play is really good. But what I didn't expect is coming into this film study and leaving thinking, shit, number seven's a ball player, number 23's a ball player, safeties and corners are playing really, really well. Um, by the way, their backup nickels an impact football player. Like I did not come into this film study thinking uh, like I'm going to be leaving thinking, shit, they, they're, they're really good in the back end too. Like, I know they're really good up front, but they're really good in the back end, too. Watch number seven right here, Jonathan. He is going to fight through man coverage. They're going to get a bunch of picks right here and try to flare the back. He's going to fight through all of it, get over the top, and make a big hit on the ball. This is high-level athleticism right here, man. It's high-level athleticism right here. Fighting through all the trash, doing so, getting his shoulders back square, ready to come back downhill and strike. Ball player. And you can see the rush plan again. It's not, it's not super complicated. They're working a game right here. Okay, they got a, a tackle in stunt, trying to get the nose tackle to occupy two, all so they can get the one on one speed rush at the top. Okay, it's very akin in terms of a rush plan to what Georgia does. Georgia's trying to identify the donkey and then hunt that sucker. All right, that's what they're doing. They're trying to identify the best one-on-one -on -one matchup and create havoc everywhere else. All right, draw attention everywhere else. Identify the one-on-one, -on -one, win the one-on-one. -on -one. So you're going to have to win the one-on-one -on -one and pass protection on Saturday. All right, we're going to flip over and watch the offense now. All right, so let's flip over to the offensive side of the football. First thing you're going to notice, all right, at least I notice, they have morphed into a 12 personnel football team. They like to play two tight ends. They're playing far more condensed in the box than they ever have been. Uh, normally when you turn tape on of Tennessee, they've got five offensive linemen, a running back in that seven, eight yard box, and then everybody else is spread way outside the numbers. Normally out of 11 personnel, trying to play with pace and play with a lot of space. Now, because of the way that their passing game has kind of or I should say the way their offensive identity has morphed into much more of a physical run-first football team. They've always been run-first, but far more this year than ever before. You've seen them kind of morph their identity. And to Josh Heupel's credit, this football team has become much more physical and much more determined and dependent upon the run than they've ever been before. Um, I think Dylan Sampson is the best sliver finder in college football. How about that? Sliver finder. This dude's ability to find the slivers in the defense is extremely impressive. His stat sheet's really impressive this year, but what I think makes him a great pro is stuff like this. There's not always going to be great, a tremendous amount of green grass in professional football. They're running counter right here, okay, pulling the backside guard, pulling the backside tackle. We've got to be really, really patient, okay, and we've got to find the creases and the slivers. Guys, there's not a ton of grass there. I'm not going to lie to you. The collision from the defensive end is really good. The linebacker on the second level is coming down, fitting it right, turning it back in. Everybody's fighting over the top of their back blocks. They're doing a decent enough job right here. There's not a ton of grass. Dylan Sampson's going to find every bit of available greenage that there is on each individual play. It's what's made him so great um, this year. Now, I am going to talk ad nauseum tonight about these tight ends. I think these tight ends' ability to fight across the formation, find their man, attach to their man, finish their man, is tremendously impressive. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they're teaching it, but they're teaching it really, really well. 
I said in my notes, I want to find this man. I want to find this uh, tight ends coach. I want to sit down with him, and I want to talk to him about how he's teaching this stuff because I can't tell you how many college tight ends I see running past their responsibilities on Saturday. This has been their problem all year, man. Um, when they're good, all right, they run the football really, really well. When they're great, they hit these shots because there's no doubt, man, every football team this year is dedicating way too many bodies to the box. Every football team. Now, this has been because Dylan Sampson's really good. This is also because they're in 12 personnel right now. There's a lot of reasons that teams are doing this, but the biggest reason is, guys, they think they can cover you. Tennessee fans, they think they can cover you. That's what every team has shown you since the Florida game. I think that's the first one we turned on where we were like, what? What? Tennessee's getting people boxing them, people putting a bunch of people in the box? That doesn't happen because you're not allowed to. They'll get too many one-on-ones, and they'll hit you for 50, 60-yard explosives like this right here. Got an opportunity to hit one. I think that's a hold at the top of the route. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. I think it's a good job by the defensive back. Not Well, bad job being flat-footed. We don't ever want to be flat-footed. But good job at least making him run through you. All right, we're, if we're going to get beat, we're going to make him run through us. It's a good job right here. Okay. Uh, I think it's a defensive hold, though. Let's take the hold, not the TD. Yeah, let's take the hold, not the TD. Uh, one thing I will say, Jonathan, I know I don't go to you a lot, but when I do from now on, put the mic on your face because it looks like I'm – like a couple times yesterday you answered my questions – and, and it didn't look like you answered my question because you're not on mic, all right? But, yeah, got to win these one-on-ones for both sides. It's, it's what it's ultimately depended upon most of the year for Tennessee. Um, even though there is a hold at the top of this route, I am calling this a non-competitive football. We threw this out of the back of the end zone when we got a free runner. We can't do that. Can't overthrow free hitters, okay? If we got a layup out there, we at least got to hit him or cause a P.I. We can't overthrow him. There is zero win for us when we throw this out of the back of the end zone. Going to play seven. Hey, just because they haven't hit their shots doesn't mean they won't. I don't quite know what the coverage is here for uh, uh, Mississippi State. Looks to me like they're playing some type of uh, you know single high safety over here and then asking this nickel to turn inwards and take number two if he goes vertical. Here's the problem. Score a white really, really, really fast, okay, and you are in trouble. They are running the grass right now, and this is a fourth and four right here, all right, and they take the shot. Now, here's what I love about this quarterback. Um, he doesn't seem to me to be rattled at this point, even though he's got tremendous reasons to be, and here's why I say that. This is fourth and four. And that's an easy completion for him. The tight end's got an option route. He can go take this win right now, and he's going to convert the chains. Instead, he continues to click through his progressions and find the big winner right here on fourth and four. That shows me a guy who's got a tremendous amount of confidence in himself, even when he doesn't need to, right? He's got no reason right now on tape to consistently feel confident about what's going on and yet he continues to do so. That shows me maturity. That shows me that, uh, you know, when we're looking for guys that can figure it out when the bullets are flying, this is one of these. Having a willingness to instill or continue to compete even when we feel like our deck's not fully loaded. Look, hey, we, we, uh, maybe he doesn't like the spacing. Maybe he doesn't like the inside leverage right here. He's already off of it. He's back to the post, okay? But uh, still like it. Still like the aggressiveness. Can't be caught flat-footed against Carl White. We'll let the dig happen to us. We'll let him cross our face. We'll let him run up underneath. What we can't do is let him run by us, okay? Can't be caught flat-footed at the top of that route. I want to be in their tight end room. I, I want to be in these meeting rooms. I want to know how they're coaching this, man. I really do. I want to know how they're coaching this because the amount of patience and the amount of confidence in your assignment and quote-unquote Doing your job right here is phenomenal. Now, they get a lot. When they are in 11 personnel, which they are right now, there's one tight end, they get a lot of odd fronts, okay? People playing three downs against them. And as, as an offensive coordinator, Hypo has had to really figure out, like, okay, how am I going to counteract some of this stuff against all these odd fronts? Because people keep playing odd fronts against us. We're in 11 personnel. 
Well, their answer has been starting to add hats to the front side of the play. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here. They're going to down, 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 add a hat. Okay, if you're in this three down front, the best way to take advantage of it is to get on these angles, down, 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 add a hat to the front side, and then we're good. We got the box clean. We're going to squeeze that tight box even tighter. And again, with this running back, man, how in the shit? Great job getting the stunts figured out right here. But, man, there, there's a free hitter, or at least a defensive tackle, that's got an opportunity right here in the hole. And he ain't going to have an opportunity very long. Dylan Sampson's going to make that guy miss. But you see what I'm talking about with the tight end right here? Watch this guy fight across. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Patient, patient, patient. Find the hole. Boom. Match up with where my guy's at. I can't tell you how many young tight ends will bounce that, Jonathan. They'll see all this trash right here, and they'll go, ooh, I'm going to go out here. Not remembering that there's a free defender over there that we can't account for. Okay, but if we crease this thing in the middle, we might be one-on-one -on -one with the safety as opposed to one-on-one -on -one with the outside linebacker. Got to be really sound against these guys in the run game, particularly when the back is this good. Okay, when the back is this good, if you are late on any of your stunts, he will find it. Okay, this is what happens right here for Mississippi State. They're late on a stunt. Okay, they're trying to spike the defensive tackle and wrap the nose. Very similar to what they did on the last play. The problem is the nose gets caught up in the trash trying to fight over the top. Boom, right there, he's caught up. And I'm going to tell you, there ain't an opportunity in the world where Dylan Sampson's not hitting that full gas. And now we got one of the fastest players on the field running north and south on us. That's bad news. Now, I, I don't think Georgia has to result to doing this to stopping the run. They're good enough to gapping. I don't think they have to throw run stunts. That's why you throw run stunts. You don't think you can hold up. So we start to throw these stunts and hope that we can get these guys off their track and hope that we can create negative plays. All right, but when we don't, when we don't create negative plays, we're opening ourselves up. I have never seen a Georgia defense open themselves up in response because we can't beat them, right? That's not what they do. They line up, they two gap, they live to fight another down. They're gonna make you methodically move the football. They're not gonna open up opportunities for jugular shots. Young quarterbacks still got a long way to go, guys. Young quarterbacks still got a long way to, do, to go, and there's still a lot of improvements to be had, right? Uh, like this play right here, we're going to roll left, all right? And here's the read, all right? Here's the progression. We got a deep comeback right here from number one. We got the arrow in the flat from the tight end. We got the deep over. So we're probably going to read this, I would imagine, one to two to three. As we come out, if the tight ends run into immediate grass, we're going to hit him. We're going to read this down to up, all right? Now, let's go through the progression. Down set hut, we come out. We don't like the tight end in the flat right now. We got an arrow defender right there, all right? We do think this corner is in a compromised position, right? He is running towards the field, and we're running this comeback right now, all right? So, this ball should be coming out of his hand as the wide receiver gets into his break. Right now, the ball should be thrown. Is the ball being thrown? The ball is not being thrown. So we are late, right? We're late on this football, which is why it's incomplete. But if we come out of this break and we don't throw this on time, let's just snap our eyes back to number three. Look at number three running the grass right now. He's wide ass open, okay? So there's still a lot of progression left to be had on this young football player. Not only does he have the occasional miss in his reads and in his progressions, okay, he has the occasional accuracy miss as well. Our eyes just never get back to that Dover, do they? They never come back over to that. And look, I, I like to come back as well. Like I said, we just throw it late. We can't throw that ball late. Let's look at it one more time before we go to our next clip. It's got to be thrown now. Boom. As he's coming out of that break. Corner does a great job coming out of that speed turn as well. All right, so a little bit late in our progression there. And occasionally, we'll have accuracy just uh, prop, not problems, but just the random flare up, should I call it? The accuracy flare up, like this one right here. Okay, just woof. All right, now here, here, here's what I was doing last night as I was watching this. There is no doubt on this comeback. I think it's Dante Thornton. There's no doubt on this comeback. There's a little bit of stumble at the top of the break. So let's look at that first. Okay, let's look at the stumble out of the top of the break. 
just a little bit, right? Slides out, his feet slide out from underneath him. So stumble out of the break. The other thing, Jonathan, we have an underneath hook defender here and we have a defender over the top. So if I'm trying to communicate to my wide receiver, where am I missing? Outside. I'm gonna miss outside, that's right. So I'm gonna miss out here. So is it that bad of a miss? No. All right, but when you look at this on tape, when you're a, a Tennessee fan watching the TV copy of this, you're like, shit, man. Quarterback can't hit a broad side of a barn. But in reality, there's an, a, a reason why we're missing like we're missing. And great news, we're missing outside. If we miss inside, this might be a pick six. It looks really bad. It looks like a really bad miss from the tight. But again, we slip out of our break. And I, I'm trying to miss there. I'm trying to communicate to my wide receiver, hey, this is where the grass is going to be for you afterwards, right? This is where the grass is going to be for you to run after this catch. I mean, Jonathan, how many times – and I know they're in 12 personnel. There's one tight end, there's two tight ends. I know, but how many times – watching Tennessee film, have you seen them just be like, all right, those nine guys for that box, and we're going to put these dudes on islands 53 yards from the ball. Teams have been so terrified to do this, all right? And there's a reason why, and here's the reason why. When they hit these, man, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If you dedicate yourselves to the run this much, which this year teams have had to, and they start hitting these, man, we got to change game plans. Got to change game plans. Now, here's the good news for Georgia fans listening to this. I ain't never in my life, never in my life, have I turned tape on and seen Georgia feel as if they need to dedicate that many bodies to the run. I don't care if you got eight dudes in the box. So never have I ever felt that stressed to do that to you as a defense. Sheesh. Doink. Head top, touchdown. Light show, Johnny. <laughs> That's a Friday night mic reference for those of you who don't watch some of the best content that we produce. Let's go to play 30. It's an absolute special throw right here. That's all the notes say. Oh, I remember this. This is a dig back into the face of a defensive lineman. This is nuts. This is nuts. Watch the tight on this, John. Look at this. This is why this dude, for, for Tennessee fans watching, this is why you paid this guy $8 million right here. Look at this. Doink. To change your arm slot, too, to get over the face of this defensive lineman right there, and to cut it off, kind of does one of these to get rid of that football, and then to rip it right into the face mask of your wide receiver. That's big boy shit right there. All right, I told you earlier, they're in 11 personnel. This is their one tight end. It's holding stays up here. All right, Squirrel White's in the backfield. He's going to motion out. They're in 11 personnel. What did I tell you defenses play against them in 11 personnel, Jonathan? Do you remember? They play odd. They play three down. Here's that three down look, okay? So I told you, Heupel's done a really, really good job of figuring out new ways to run the football against odd fronts. It's why you heard Kirby say they got a lot of non-traditional run game. This is what he's talking about. They're going to take the tackle and add him onto the front side of this play after uh, motioning Squirrel White out. Okay, so we got the lock on the front side tackle. We're going to pull the backside tackle. All right, and then we're going to run this play towards where we're adding the hat. Almost everybody's playing them three two five or uh, three two six uh, against this uh, eleven personnel spread formation. It's good tackle in open field, and that's what it's going to require, man. It's going to require some tackles in open field. Now, here's one thing I will say about this offense that I don't necessarily love, and. I've always seen it pop up on tape, particularly when you turn the tight on. They play with so much pace that sometimes I think it can mess them up. Because, like, as an offensive line, 
every every front is different, right? Like especially right now, we're playing with pace, so guys are getting lined up late. Like I don't, I don't quite know what my assignment is. Am I am I back blocking on this guy? Is this guy going to come? What is my responsibility? So as an offensive lineman, it's great that we're playing with pace and we're making some confusion for the defense. But in reality, sometimes for a defender, it's just line up and go forward. It's just line up and go forward and watch what happens for number eight. He lines up and goes forward. All right. And there's a bit of confusion from the center. Am I fully back blocking to this guy from the tackle? Am I pinch hinging on this guy? He gets to just go straight forward and he ultimately makes a negative play. Now, what was, you know, first and 10 turns into a second and 12 for us as an offense. Okay. So I've always found on tape that sometimes their pace can be a problem for their own offensive line when it comes to getting lined up and knowing what our responsibilities are. Especially, Jonathan, it would be one thing if we just line up and say, hey, we're going to run inside zone. We're going to line up and we're going to run outside zone. But when we're lining up running counter, we got guys pulling, guys back blocking, guys going to certain assignments. They're moving. It causes levels of uh, confusion. Look at that tight end, John. Look at that tight end. Watch him find work. Watch him find work. Oh, there he is. Boom. Lock on. Latch and finish. That's holding stays, man. That was a, that was a H back project coming out of high school, man. As a as a guy from Westminster here in Atlanta, that was like 6'5", 225 pounds, really good, fluid athlete. I thought, ooh, it's gonna be a mismatch. Evan Ingram type in high school, in college, and we get to college, and he's like a gnarly H back blocker. That's that's coaching, is what that is. Oh, speaking of tight ends, coach, we got we gotta have a talk, man. We gotta have a talk. I got I gotta know. I got to know, what are we doing? Look at this, man. Watch this guy come over into this picture and tell me if there's ever a moment of hesitation. Watch how physically and quickly he goes up and finds his work. Coming from motion, settling, getting our shoulders square, getting back vertical off the down block from our left tackle, and then finding work. And not only that, getting our head inside. Look at this. Watch him. We know where the play's going. We don't want this play bouncing. I just told you. We don't want that guy. We want to crease this sucker. Quickest way to the end zone, straight line. We don't want to bubble at all. So get that head back inside once we get over there. What a great job. All right, so here's what you should know. Backup came in this football game, right, Jonathan? Mm -hmm. Okay, down distance formation personnel. Third and six. Okay, so we only need seven yards, right? If we got a backup quarterback in, probably, probably give him some easy completion right at the sticks. That's what we're probably thinking. That's what I'm thinking right now. All right, so here we go. Let's go to the actual play. Down set hut. Let's look at the concepts. Uh, concepts. Let's, let's look at the concepts. We got a bender here. We got a bender here. By the way, first down markers right here. We got go ball. We got go ball. Does that look like conservative play calling to you, Jonathan? No. No, it does not. It does not look like conservative play calling to me. Gas done, throw that bitch up. Gas done, throw that bitch up. That's what's going on right now, okay? And guess what? Every play that I watched, they wasn't, they wasn't out here, ooh, let's get him a, a good little tight end screen. Ooh, let's hand the ball off 12 times, punt the football. How y'all like my new offense? That wasn't this. Foot was still in the gas, okay? He was still very aggressive in his play calling. I expect him to be the same guy if Gaston, throw that bitch up, is out there on Saturday. Okay? Appreciate you guys being here at Tennessee fans. I know you're here. All right? I know you're here and I know you're watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're a true OG, if you're sitting through, what, about 55 minutes right now? 45. If you're sitting through 45 minutes of film study, um, what, what should be our word today? Block them. That's it. You got to block. Block, block, block. No, actually, don't put block on there. That might mess up the algorithm. Just put I love you. Do Light something. Light show, Johnny. Light show, Johnny. Appreciate you. Love you. Bye.